If you were to sit down with a genre film fan and ask them what movie they are most excited about this fall slash summer, they would probably say Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. But you probably couldn't say the same about The Crow, which is really not getting much press or buzz behind it. And when it does, it's for all the wrong reasons. Hey y'all, my name is Mike Vaughn, and in this video, I want to take a look at the marketing for two films, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and The Crow, and explore which movie is crushing it, and which one is failing miserably. Spoiler alert, The Crow is not doing very well. Well, duh. For more context, I want to take a look at both properties and their place in pop culture, but also how they're viewed by their respective fan bases. Beetlejuice is a 1988 movie directed by the King of Cork, Tim Burton. Most of you know the plot, but a quick recap is a very vanilla couple suddenly die in a car crash and come back as ghosts. Arthur, I used to, I used to hunt ghosts with your uncle Cyrus. Goats? Ghosts! Ghosts, goddammit, listen to me! However, their spirit forms are stuck in their house. Making things worse, a yuppie couple move in and completely remodel what was their dream home. When they feel like they're not getting help by legitimate means, they contact Beetlejuice, and zany, spooky happenings abound. On a $15 million budget, the film made a nice $74 million at the box office. Not to mention the film had a line of toys and even a cartoon series that ran for an impressive four seasons and over 90 episodes. Also, in my humble opinion, is one of the best film to cartoon adaptations ever. I mean, the theme song is a certifiable banger, which unfortunately I can't play because of copyright reasons. But if you're not familiar, look it up on YouTube. It's amazing. The film also did very well on VHS, which was a staple in my household growing up. Beetlejuice is special as outside of the cartoon series, the movie, up until now, never had any sequels or media to keep the brand afloat. However, it did get regular cable TV showings, not to mention a ton of merch that helped keep the IP very much alive. And with a hit musical, it further cemented that Beetlejuice is a film that connects with different generations over the decades. The Crow from 1994 is a masterpiece, which is a word I don't throw around lightly. The film perfectly distills the feeling of 90s disaffected youth and remains a movie that is rightly regarded as one of the best comic book adaptations of all time. Also, it has a killer soundtrack. Based on a comic book of the same name, the film centers around a man named Eric Draven, played by Brandon Lee, who is tragically killed along with his partner. A mystical crow gives him the power to seek revenge. Keeping the IP alive is the fact that the film got some sequels as well as an ongoing comic series by creator James Obar. Much like Beetlejuice, there has been a ton of merch. However, The Crow is also one of those movies that is a special case. This is because young up-and-coming star Brandon Lee tragically died during an on-set accident. This eerily mirrors the plot of the film and has been a major talking point for decades. While both are very different movies, I would say that they pretty much are equal in terms of their respective fan bases. Beetlejuice may have had more popularity over the last decade. I would argue the Crow fan base is just as loyal, and that's without a new entry into the franchise in some time. And wouldn't you know it, both Beetlejuice and The Crow are slated to hit theaters this year. The Crow releasing in August, and Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, a direct sequel slash requel for September. Admittedly, the long-awaited Beetlejuice sequel was something fans really wanted, yet legacy sequels and their track records have been overall very spotty, which made fans pretty leery in the beginning. However, even before the teaser trailer or any stills, Burton had gone on record saying that he really wanted to bring the film back to basics. This means using stop motion animation and as much as possible practical effects over CGI. I recall when this interview came out, 
it changed the tides almost overnight in terms of fans being very excited. This excitement only grew when the teaser trailer came out. Right away, the buzz was palpable, and now that we have a longer trailer, it's safe to say that it's a movie that has built a lot of goodwill with its loyal fan base. Like, I would be shocked if this isn't a huge hit. Most fans might know, but for some added context, this movie has been in development hell for decades. It seems like a new director and a new vision were brought on board, only to fail, and then another would try, rinse, repeat. It's a project that was seemingly always doomed to fail. Yet, against all odds, the project was finally greenlit with Rupert Sanders, who previously directed some very safe studio fare, such as The Ghost in the Shell and Snow White and the Huntsman. These movies vary in terms of critical acclaim, but none really have made a cultural impact, especially someone tackling an IP that connects the fans in such a strong way. Right off the bat, the very safe choice in director didn't exactly get fans hyped. Please clap. But let's get real. The marketing for The Crow was always going to be an uphill battle. Unlike Beetlejuice, fans didn't necessarily want a new Crow movie, especially if it was going to be thought of as a soulless remake of the beloved 90s film. The marketing for The Crow has been slim, but the first official material came out in the form of stills, and let's just say it was not well received. In fact, I made a whole video about that that I will link in the description. A teaser trailer also didn't do much to get fans excited. It also didn't help that the director of the 1994 The Crow and a few actors were quick to jump on the bashing train, which definitely did not help. What was baffling was that there was really no counter marketing to get around this savage press. Probably strangest of all is the fact that the Crow comic creator, James Obar, was not a part of the marketing. And though I scrubbed through the internet, I could not find a single comment from him in regards to the remake, at least at, of the time of this recording. This is the big issue with the marketing for the Crow. It's not a remake, it's an adaptation. And if the marketing team was skilled, they would know that the plan of attack should be to help fans understand that this isn't a remake, this isn't meant to replace or besmirch the Brandon Lee version. It's simply a different adaptation of a comic book movie, and that's done all the time. Speaking of source material, this is why Obar should have been a part of the marketing of his film from day one. Diehard fans of both the comics and the 94 film may have reconsidered if they had heard from the original creator. Now, there seems to be some light at the end of the tunnel, as the official trailer has at least garnered some positive feedback, though this is generous considering the opinions still seem to be very sharply divided. Yet, as I was finishing the script, I saw the Crow reboot was making headlines once again, but for all the wrong reasons, which seems to be a pattern. Screen Ramp published an article regarding Crow star Bill Skarsgård, try saying that five times fast, uh, in a recent interview with Esquire magazine, it boils down to Skarsgar was unhappy with the open-ended finale, which, um, as somebody who's been involved with press junkets, at least on the journalist side, it's kind of wild that his PR team allowed him to throw some shade at the film. It also seems to be throwing out a tiny spoiler, just to add more fuel to this dumpster fire. The author of this Esquire piece brought up a great point by saying, as such, the studio deciding to preemptively treat 2024 as the Crow reboot as the start of a franchise may not be the best way to leave a lasting impression on an already skeptical audience. While the original movie spawned three sequels, those and the additional comic series chose to expand the story beyond Eric, as the Crow would give others the power to avenge their untimely, brutal ends. And I think that gets to the heart of things. It's the first time that a Crow movie has tried to reimagine Eric Draven as the titular embodiment of vengeance. But if that's the case and you really want to take it there, you definitely should have prepared for some backlash. Now, you will still have those who will dislike it out of principle, and frankly, you just cannot sway those people. But the lack of engagement and goodwill for those of us who still can be swayed either way is really wild, especially for a movie that has went through so many different directors and writers.
you may think that poster art as a means of effective movie marketing is dead. But once again, Beetlejuice Beetlejuice and its early teaser posters kind of proved that wrong. And I remember seeing this and myself and other fans were really getting hyped by these. Now, compare that with the <laughs> Crow poster. And honestly, it just feels like a generic VOD promo art. It's just so lackluster. And as far as I can tell, no other promo posters have been released. Once again, it's not even a close race here. In the digital age, there are better tools to drum up interest in a film. So it kind of blows my mind when you have a movie coming out in just a few months that has really zero buzz around it. And the articles coming out are in large negative in tone. I'd love to know what, if any, the strategy the marketing team had for this movie, because whatever it is, it's not working. Only time will tell if The Crow and Beetlejuice Beetlejuice will be a hit or a miss, but I do think comparing the marketing for both is pretty interesting. At least I think so. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I like to weigh in on some of these projects, but maybe tackle them from a different aspect. I want to know what you all think. Please let me know in the comments below if you're excited for either film and which film do you think that's going to be better received. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you all in the next video.